In this podcast, we're going to look at some advanced trig limits. And clearly, here we have the limit as x approaches pi over 4, pi fourths, uh, of 1 minus tangent x over sine x minus cosine x. Clearly an indeterminate limit. Um, at pi fourths, sine x and cosine x are the exact same thing. And tangent x is 1. So uh, as you can see from the side, box, uh, side over there, uh, this is going to be an indeterminate limit. And we just finished one where multiplying by the conjugate gave us, gave us our, our solution, our pathway to our solution. Well, here is an example where multiplying by the conjugate does not give you a pathway to a solution. Um, when I multiply by the conjugate, I got 1 minus tangent squared x. That's not a Pythagorean identity. We have a sine error. And I did stick with, I did actually did this one in a live lesson. I've left it up ever since. Uh, and I did stick with it a while longer to try to have something work out. And eventually, I had to admit defeat um, that multiplying by the conjugate was never going to make it better. Um, and hence the sad face next to choose a new path. Because that this path is not one that works. So sometimes you will, and I leave this up here for a reason, sometimes you will choose a path and it doesn't work. And when it becomes clear that it is not getting simpler, it is only getting more complicated, maybe you should abandon ship and try a new plan. So that is what I'm doing here at this one, uh, and a new plan. So if multiplying by the conjugate didn't make it any better, let's try a quotient identity. Let's try rewriting tangent. So I have the limit as x approaches pi fourths of 1 minus sine x over cosine x divided by sine x minus cosine x. And now you look at it and you go, didn't make our anything any better. And it didn't yet. Didn't yet. However, Notice we have it technically have a fraction. And what did we learn when we had a fraction? We learned to combine, we have it, this is still indeterminate, still not any better. Combine fractions for indeterminate limits. So when you have a fraction and it's indeterminate, combine the fractions into one. And so how do you combine those two fractions? Well, you're going to have to rewrite one. And you're going to have to rewrite one so it's got the same denominator as sine x over cosine x. In other words, we're going to rewrite that to be cosine x over cosine x. So we have the limit as x approaches pi fourths of cosine x over cosine x minus sine x over cosine x. So this here is just 1, right? That's still 1. And this one here is still tangent x. You've just changed its, its look. And this, now we have sine x minus cosine x in the denominator. And things are starting to look a little better because I kind of see a sine x and a cosine x in the numerator, and I kind of see 1 in the denominator as well. Let's stick with this. All right, so now let's combine that into one fraction. So we have the limit as x approaches pi fourths. All right, so that's going to be, and actually, let's change the, well, I'll change the order on the next one. I don't want to lose anybody. So I'm going to write just cosine x minus sine x right now. But if you notice, what I want is sine x minus cosine x. So they're both the wrong sign. So think where I might be going with that if they're both the wrong sign. If 1 was to the wrong sign, like up with 1 minus tangent squared x, I have a problem. When they're both the wrong sign, I don't have a problem anymore. I just have a negative 1 to factor out. Sine x minus cosine x. Now, let's change the order of that cosine x minus sine x and factor out that negative 1. And I'd like to do that in one step. So our limit as x goes to pi fourths, let's pull out the negative. All right, so I'm going to switch the order, right? Because the order you add in doesn't matter, right? And so technically, we're just we're adding, we're adding negatives, all right? So if I factor out the negative one, sine x is now positive, 
and cosine x is now negative. And now things are looking even better. So I'm just going to write here a little writing, a little red writing here, that we just factored out negative 1 and switched order. We didn't change anything, right? I can have negative cosine x plus sine x, but I'd rather have sine x minus cosine x. All right, continuing on. Now, I'm not going to write in the, in the denominator, I'm not going to write divided by sine x minus cosine x. Let's just multiply by the reciprocal. Let's change it now. Because that was going to be our next step anyhow. So now this is just, we just changed the division to multiply by the reciprocal. And that's, you can do that. I highly recommend that. Because as soon as we do that, oh, look at that. Now here's our problem. This is why we had a problem and an indeterminate limit. Oh, look at that. There's a factor of sine x and cosine x. So sometimes when you, if, if uh, plan A doesn't work, multiply by the conjugate, and it's tangent x, try rewriting that as sine x over cosine x. And, see, and make it a fraction, and then combine the fractions to get rid of our problem. So now we have the limit as x approaches pi fourths. We've got the only thing left in the numerator is a negative 1. The only thing left in the denominator is cosine x. And there's no problem with plugging into this. So we now have negative 1 over cosine pi fourths. Right, and so that's just going to be negative 1 divided by square root of 2 over 2. Right, and actually, let's not <laughs> rationalize that. So then it would just be 1, or excuse me, uh, yeah, 1 over square root of 2. Sorry. I'm so used to rationalizing it. 1 over square root of 2. There's really no point in rationalizing it because it's going to end up right back in the, with a the radical in the denominator again, because we could just multiply by the reciprocal. That would be much better. All right, so we, now we have negative 1 times the square root of 2, which is just negative square roots of 2. There we go. That's our answer, all right? So what looked like it was going to be awful, especially if you watched me do this the first time a few years ago, um, turns out to be not so bad because I remembered I could just combine the fractions. It will make it better. And it did. Right? And so here's this one done. All right? So just take this one in. You know, feel free to pause the tape. You know, look at the notes one after I post them or just watch it again. All right? So that because this one, this one was a good one. Let's take a look at a few more. And they are of a varying difficulty. All right, we'll have easier ones and more complicated ones, all of this mixed in. All right, so let's take a look at the first one here. We have tangent x, 5x squared minus 3x. Everything's going to zero. All right, let's rewrite. So we'll have the limit as x goes to zero of sine x over cosine x. Just use a little quotient identity here. Because we don't really have anything else we can do anyhow. Uh, and then divided by 5x squared minus 3x. All right, we still have a problem. Let's split this and let's factor yeah, let's split this up, and then maybe we should factor out something out of 5x squared minus 3x, you think? So the limit as x goes to 0, so now we have sine x over cosine x times 1 over, let's just factor the x out right now, 5x minus 3. All right, sine x and x are going to have to go together. So we have the limit as x goes to 0 sine x over x times, and now we'll have cosine x is going to come over here, 1 over cosine x 
times 5x minus 3. Well, now that's going to, that looks better, looks a lot better. All right, so now we can find our limit. Sine x over x, that's 1. And now we can plug into the rest. We have 1 over cos, because it can't be indeterminate, cosine 0 times 5 times 0 minus 3. And that's going to be 1 times 1 over, we've got 1 times, and this is going to be a negative 3. So our final answer is negative 1 third. That's our answer. Look at that. All right, so a little quotient identity. Split the fraction. And a little reducing here. Or a factor, I should say. We didn't really reduce factor. Uh, that factor looks terrible. Let's just rewrite it again. Split fraction and factor. Right. And everything is all good now. All right, so let's do the next one. And yeah, I'll write in black, I guess. All right, so let's just split this up. This one's a nice, easy one. So that, the one on the left, it's not really difficult, right? I, I wouldn't say that was earth shakingly difficult. The one on the right, pretty easy. All right, let's split the fraction. Right off the bat, we've only got one thing in the denominator. So we have the limit as x goes to 0 of x over x plus sine x over x. You need to reduce that, all right? We got to reduce. We, so we have the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 plus sine x over x. And now let's find our limit because the limit as x, as x approaches 0 of 1 is 1 and the limit of sine x over x as x approaches 0 is 1, and together they're 2. So that one was a pretty easy one. Once you split it and reduced, uh, it was pretty easy to take the, the limit right there. All right? We got it. We have a, we had a difference, all right? So we should multiply by the conjugate. This is a time we would want to do that because we have cosine. I'm just going to put it right up here. So we have 1 plus cosine squared 4x over 1 plus cosine squared 4x. In the numerator, we'll have the limit as x approaches 0. That's going to be 1 minus cosine. You've got a square times a square. It's cosine down to the fourth, cosine 4, 4x. Four right? And then divided by, don't distribute this, sine squared 3x, and then times 1 plus cosine squared 4x. Let's do some replacing. Okay? So let's replace the 1 minus cosine 4, 4x. We're going to replace that with a... So we have 1 minus cosine squared 4x equals sine squared 4x. Yeah, that's true. But we have a, sine, we have a square times a square, so that's actually to the fourth power. So if we want to really be accurate here on my side here. Well, that's true. In this case, we have... It's raised to the fourth power. So we have the limit as x approaches 0. This should be now, or it would be nice if we made it now, sine 4, 4x. Four right? And then um, we've got all the other stuff. Let's write it down, and then let's start moving things around, because we're going to have to split things up. So 1 plus cosine squared 4x. All right, so we've got two cosines. Let's split the two signs up. I don't know why I still have. Is 
this would really say sine 4, 4x. And so that's going to be sine 4x all to the fourth power. And let's move you down here. There we go. All right, so, well, this is true. It's taking up a lot of space. And since x is approaching 0, it's not really a, too much of our concern right now. All right, so we have the limit as x approaches 0. Let's split everybody up. We have a sign for 4x. For we have a times in the denominator. We have a sine squared 3x. So it's a good idea. Just, keep, just start splitting them up. And then let's see what we're missing. And then we have 1 over 1 plus cosine squared 4x. For us to use the sine rule, we've got to match. So this one needs, if you say 4x, you're wrong. Because the 4x is being raised to the fourth power. We actually need a 4x to the fourth power. In other words, we need 64x to the fourth, because that's technically what that means. So to match, we've got to match 4x to the fourth power. Right? If we don't match 4x to the fourth power, then we can't, we can't use our sign rule here. Likewise, right, and it says it over there, remember to square, cube, etc. coefficients, we have sine squared x, sine, uh, sine squared x, sine cubed x, sine to the fourth x, etc. All right, so we have to, we have to um, raise that to the fourth, oh, except that's cubed. Whoops, 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 sorry. 256 x to the fourth. Now we're to the fourth power. So over here, the 3 has got to be squared. So this would be 3x squared is what that needs. That needs a 9x squared. Now we went and willy-nilly put numbers in there. We just got to balance it out. So that's why I'm writing in red so you can see them very clearly. We need a 256x to the fourth in the numerator. And we need a 9x squared in the denominator. And now all is good because we're balanced. All right, now we can find the limit. Just move down one more time. And I think I can squeeze everybody in here at the end. Whoops, and there goes my pen. All right, so sine 4, 4x over 256x to the fourth, that's just going to equal 1. The same thing with 9x squared over sine squared 3x. It's a 1. Oh, and we need to reduce. So I don't want to write the whole thing over again because we're really running out of space. So let's just reduce right over here. All right, so that's going to reduce, right? And so now that's going to be just an x squared in the numerator. All right, so now we have, we can plug in. We have 1 over 1 plus cosine. 4 times 0, all raised, so technically it's all squared. So whatever we get, it's squared. And then times 256 over 9 x squared, or excuse me, 0 squared, we're plugging in. And I think you can see where this is going to be headed. All right, so we have 1 times 1 times So that's going to be 1, and then it's going to be 1 plus, now that's just going to be 1, because 4 times 0 is 0, cosine of 0 is 1, and 1 squared is still 1. So that's going to be 1 half times, well, 256 times 0, that's going to be 0, and guess what? This is 0. So if that, si if that well, hadn't been sine squared 3x, and it maybe been sine to the fourth 3x, well, then we wouldn't have a 0. How boring. It's a 0. It feels a little unsatisfying when our limit is 0. 
right? But uh, we solved it all out appropriately. And so all we did was we multiplied by the conjugate and we split that up so that we can have the signs separated. So remember, the rule applies whether the signs in the numerator or the denominator so long as the, it, we match, right? The, the AX part matches, including the exponent. So not indeterminate anymore, it's just zero. All right, so let's take a look at this one. Well, we can't plug in because you'd have in the numerator, I'd have 2 minus 2, so I'd have sine 0, and that's 0. If I plug in the denominator, I have 2 squared minus 2 minus 2. That's 4 minus 2 minus 2, that's 0. Right? So you can't plug in. It's indeterminate. That's right there. We haven't written it indeterminate. I've said it, but I haven't written it. Shame on me. I should write it too. So make sure that you got that. Indeterminate. All right, so we have to do something, all right? Let's factor our denominator. We have the limit as x goes to 2, sine x minus 2 over, that's going to be x minus 2, x plus 1, all right? I don't really need to use factor by grouping here. Well, at, my coefficient is 1, multiplies to give me negative 2, adds to give me 1, that's going to be negative 2 and 1. All right, now let's rewrite this. So we have the limit as x approaches 2 of sine x minus 2. I want to put the x minus 2 here. And then times 1 over x plus 1. And you might say, they match. But hey, on that other page, didn't you just say the limit had to be as x approaches 0 for that sine rule? That's approaching 2. How can you do this, Ms. Mishagna? So if sine is not just an x with a coefficient, you're going to set that whatever it is, in parentheses, that blop equal to 0. So x minus 2 equals 0, x is 2. So we have sine 0 when we have, si for sine x minus 2, we're going to have sine 0 when x is 2. So if it's not just a co an x with a coefficient, then the limit is as what, um, the limit has to approach whatever would make that zero, right? So it's going to be the limit as x approaches 2 because if x equals 2 sine x minus 2, it ends up being sine 0. And that's what it has to be. All right? So when we have, if we've got something, if we've got a, a, an expression there, whatever would make that be sine 0, that's what the limit has to approach. In this case, it's 2. That's what's going to cause that to be 0. And now we can use our sine rule. So this is a nice easy one because this sine x minus 2 over x minus 2 is just 1. I can plug into the other part. I have 1 over 2 plus 1, and that is 1 third. So here's a tricky little use of the, um, the sine rule. So sine x minus 2 over x minus 2 is still the sine rule, because as x approaches 2, 2 minus 2 is 0. It wouldn't work, actually, if it was x approaching 0. Right? We couldn't use that, right? because then we'd have sine of negative 2. Right, and that just, that wouldn't be the sign rule anymore. All right, so here I have a bunch of little ones to do. All right, so we have the limit as x approaches pi halves, sine x over cosine 6x. All right, so that whole limit of sine x over x approaches 1 only if the limit as x approaches 1, right? So it's not sine 0, it's sine pi half substitute. This one is not the sine rule. So we have sine pi halves over cosine 6 times pi halves. That's going to give us sine pi halves over, that's going to be 3 pi. All right, so sine pi halves, that's 1. 3 pi, let's remind ourselves where that would be. All right, so I go around 1 pi. 
2 pi, 3 pi. And so 3 pi is the same as pi, which means cosine 3 pi is negative 1, which gives us negative 1. There we go. So that one was a new one. All right, so here let's take a look at this one. We have the limit as x approaches negative pi uh, from the right-hand side of cosine x over cotangent x. All right, so um, let's take a look at what this looks like. All right, let's take a look at cotangent x. All right, so cotangent x, we know what cosine x is. That's not our problem. Let's look at cotangent x. All right, so if we look at cotangent x, and we're adjacent over opposite, and we would have negative 1 over 0. So cotangent is undefined at pi. Right? Notice it is approaching, as we get closer and closer to pi, it is approaching increases without bounds. Right? So we've got cosine is going to negative 1, cotangent is going to infinity. How will this work out? Let's split, and it's on the right-hand side, so if it just said, if it said negative, negative pi, we'd have a little bit of a problem there. Let's rewrite this. I don't know if I give myself enough space. Let's rewrite this. All right, so, and let's do that right up here so I don't have to bend over. All right, so we have the limit, and I'm trying to write at the bottom of the board there. So we have the limit as x approaches negative pi, so it's from the right-hand side, cosine x, let's change cotangent x, that would be cosine x over sine x. Alright, so let's rewrite that. So now we have, co oops, I forgot to write limit, shame on me. So we have the limit as x approaches negative pi from the right hand side cosine x times sine x over cosine x. Oh, look at that. E, e, there we go. Oh, now it's all making sense, huh? So, a little algebraic manipulation. If things don't make sense, just simplify it algebraically, and then they do. All right, just squeeze it in there. And here, we can get rid of you. We all know what cotangent is. It's just going to be the limit as x approaches negative pi sine x, and that is 0. All right, so this one makes no sense at first. I had the answer in everything, a graph and everything. All right, when we look at cotangent, we've got 1 going to negative infinity, cotangent going to infinity, but... When you solve it algebraically, now it makes lots of sense. Oh, whoops. I should I wrote sign I didn't plug in and I should have. So this would be sine x equals sine negative pi, and that is zero. Whether we're approaching from the right hand side or the left hand side. Alright. Let's take a look over here at our next one. Alright, I've got a few of them but one's already done for us. Let's take a look at this one. A, oh, so easy, so easy. So we have the limit as x approaches 0. Sine 3x, you need a 3x in the denominator. If you go and multiply the denominator by 3, you better well do the same thing to the numerator. So this whole thing here, that's 1 times 3. Our limit is 3. Easy, cheesy, lemon squeezy. Over here we have a limit. As theta goes to 0, sine 3 theta over 2 theta, we got to make it match. So we're going to have to multiply that by 3 halves. If you multiply the denominator by 3 halves, you have to multiply the numerator by 3 halves. So that's going to give us the limit. As theta goes to 0, we've got sine 3 theta over 3 theta times 3 halves, and that's going to be 1 for sine times 3 halves, which is 3 halves. And there we go. 
So let's continue on. Let's look at C here. We have the limit as x approaches 0 of, from the positive side of, and actually we're looking at this one right here. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over the absolute value of x. Well, that's what's going to happen from the right-hand side? So sine x is not an absolute value bars, right? So it can be positive, it can be negative, right? Um, but our x is in absolute value bars. So no matter what, it's going to always be a positive number. Look at that. So let's just think of it, let's kind of separate it out and think it from both sides here. So if we have positive numbers, right, we're going to have the limit as x approaches 0. So something positive, right? So we're getting close to the positive side, right? So if we were to plug in anything, let's just kind of do a little, a little, because it's not, this is not one so, one that's so easy to just, this is a nice one for a graph. This one's not really an algebra, as much an algebraic manipulation, right? So if we think about sine at 0, there's our little unit circle here. So if I'm approaching from the, the positive side here, what's the, what's the sine of sine? What's the sine of sine? So remember sine, if. If I'm approaching from the negative side here, sine is negative, right? So from the positive side, I end up with a positive number, and I end up with a positive number. Everybody's positive. But as I approach from the left, this guy's negative, and this guy's still positive. And you can see clearly they don't match, right, because of the absolute value signs. If there weren't an absolute value signs, our answer would be 1, right? So, and so that's only, by the way, that my little drawing there is only looking at the numerator, not the whole thing. So the right and left hand limits are going to be different. And therefore, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over the absolute value of x doesn't exist. As a matter of fact, I think 99.999 times, if you've got an absolute value bar in the denominator, right, unless you've got something that's always positive. So if, if your numerator is always positive and your denominator is always positive, then it's not a problem. But if your numerator can be positive or negative, since your, your denominator can only be positive, it's going to be a problem and the limit's just not going to exist. So there was no real work needed to do that other than let's do, I got these three, and then a couple more things to go over. All right, so let's see if we can finish this. In, oh, well, maybe we can finish it one podcast. All right, our first thing here is to factor. I'm so close to the end. Limit as t approaches negative 3. That thing's an arrow. I'm going to write below. The limit as t approaches negative 3, sine t plus 3. So notice negative 3 is going to make that sine 0. So this is going to 0. If I plug in a negative 3 here, right, I'm going to end up with the same thing because it's going to be negative 27 and positive 27. That's going to 0. So we can our sine rule, let's be thinking that's going to apply here. We can factor out the t squared. That leaves us with t plus 3. So that's going to be the limit as t approaches negative 3 of sine t plus 3 over t plus, oops, 3. I don't need that. I need the parentheses here, but not over here. Times 1 over t squared. Don't forget him. So this whole thing here is 1. 1 over t squared we can plug into times 1 over negative 3 squared is going to be 1 ninth. There we go. All done. So remember as x approaches 0 of x cotangent to x, right? Can we plug in the 0? Will that be a problem? Let's think about cotangent is cosine over sine. We better split that up, right, because sine is undefined when x is 0. Let's split that. So we have the limit as x approaches 0. Right? So we've got 
x. Let's replace that cotangent with a cosine 2x over a sine 2x. Ah, now we can use our sine rule. So we have the limit as x approaches 0, except we need a 2, right? So this guy here needs a 2. This one here is going to need a 2 as well. So we have 2x over 2 sine 2x. Got to go to the denominator since I have a 2x. I, added, I multiplied by 2 in the numerator. And then times cosine 2x. Now we can evaluate that. We're going to have, so we've got the 2x and sine x. This part here, that's 1. We technically here have a 1 half times a 1 times cosine 2 times 0, which is just a 1. So our limit's going to be, whoops, 1 half. 1 half will be our limit here. And oh, an easy one. I almost think we did this once before, but it's okay. We'll do it real fast. Real fast. So this would be the limit as x approaches 0, sine 3x over, and then I need to change that. So we've got 2x times 3 halves. Now it'll make it 3, and i got to multiply by 3 halves again. So we have the limit as x approaches 0. We have sine 3x over 3x times 3 halves, and that's 3 halves. There we go. Alright. So these were some nice little quick ones, just using, just doing a little splitting or using a rule. So the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x equals 1. Also the limit as x approaches 0 of x over sine x equals 1. Also, for sine ax over ax, that's 1. And the limit as x approaches 0 of ax to the n over sine n to the... Oops, oops, there's a boo-boo. A boo-boo. Some -boo. missing parentheses. If I put that in your notes, add in those parentheses. The, the, the coefficient has to be raised to the power 2. Oh, can't miss those parentheses. Right, so, so also, the limit as x approaches 0 of ax all raised to n over sine n ax is also 1. All right, so the sine rule has many forms. And if we have the limit as x approaches pi of sine x minus pi over x minus pi, that's 1 too. That counts as a 0 because it's a 0 of x minus pi. So the sine rule is as x approaches 0 and is based on the squeeze theorem. I cannot remember if I gave this in your notes. If I didn't, you want to write this down. It's good stuff. So if you haven't noticed that, that uh, every time tangent works an awful lot like sine. All right. So I have two choices here. I have the limit as x approaches 0 of and let's rewrite that, sine x over cosine x times 1 over 3x. I need to split that, so limit as x approaches 0. So we're going to have sine x gets the x, I'm going to leave the third behind, times 1 over 3 cosine x. All I've done is we write things that are multiplied together. Now I can plug in sine x over x. That goes to, that's 1 times 1 over 3 times cosine 0. That's going to be 1 third. Also, the tan I could use what's called the tangent rule. It's based on the sine over cosine. Now you can't use the tangent rule all the time. It wouldn't have helped us, for instance, in that problem where we had to rewrite and get the fractions together. That wouldn't have helped us one iota. Um, but in a simple problem like this, I could also do this as the limit as x approaches 0 
tangent x over x times one third. Right? I haven't. All I did was kind of rewrite that, and look at that. It's also one third. All right. So it does work the same if, but it doesn't have the forms. All right. So it doesn't have all those pretty forms like sine has. It's just quite not quite the same as that. Same thing here. I can do the limit as x approaches zero. Sine x over cosine. Oh, excuse me, three x. Cosine three x times one over x. And now split that. We have the limit as x approaches zero. Sine three x. Now I need a three x. So I'm going to need a three up here with cosine three x. And that would be one times three over cosine times 3 times 0, which is just 1 times 3 or 3. Or I can do the same thing here. So I need a 3x tangent 3x over 3x. I multiply to 3 there. I got to multiply 3 here. That's going to give me 1 times oops, 3, which is 3. So on a simple problem like this, yes, you can use tangent. It doesn't have all the forms. And sometimes you absolutely need to rewrite that as sine over cosine. And uh, rewriting that as sine over cosine always works. Matter of fact, that's how that tangent, the tangent rule is, comes from sine over cosine. The fact that this will work this certain way all the time. So it really, it doesn't have, it, it wasn't proved using the squeeze. Rewrite it as sine over cosine. So on a simple problem like that, you can you do this one either way. I have never had a 40-minute podcast before. Eek. But I'm so close to the end. Ah, we have, didn't we do this one? I'm sure we did this one. 100% sure. So I'm going to skip this one. And one more rule. And this has no pretty form, no pretty ones at all. So the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x over x, right? Only this one will equal 0. It has no variations, right? So you can only use if it looks just like this. Otherwise, multiply by the conjugate and use Pythagorean identity. Do not overuse this one. It doesn't have all the pretty forms, right? It's, it's pretty bland. And we, I have to do this as another podcast. I have one last one. Oh. So let's, I'm going to stop here and do this one in the next podcast. Bye for now.